Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to see how you can connect Four Flight up to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, we've done a video like this in the past, but uh, some folks were requesting specifically how to do it and kind of what it would look like over in the Four Flight sort of land. So we'll go ahead and take a look at both of those elements today, kind of one combined video. Let's go ahead and get started. First things first, I uh, pulled out the Cessna 170 today. Uh, the reason I've chosen this one is we do not have any fancy electronics on this airplane. Uh, the reason we don't have any fancy electronics is just because of the incredible age of this particular plane. Now, most people say, hey, wait a minute, you can cheat and you can bring down a little GPS display. Yeah, you can, but I mean, come on, look at this thing. It just, it, it, it begs. I mean, look at the throttle on this. It's just, yeah, it's so old school. So let's go ahead and see the different ingredients you're gonna need. The first thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need some kind of application that gives you the ability to take the telemetry that's built into flight sim and then send it to your local wi-fi now there's a bunch of different applications that we did a video a while ago that kind of showed you one the one that i use is called x mapsy so let me go ahead and I'll switch over to desktop view real quick so you can kind of see what this looks like so you can see i have this little thing here says x mapsy connected to sim connect i'm gonna go ahead and pop this one real quick and what it'll do is it'll give you a bunch of settings here now a couple of things you want to watch out for when you're using x mapsy and again this is the one i use each one's a little different the first one is i highly recommend you use sim connect it's just easier of the two some people like really like like FSUI PC, but I find that you get limited features if you do do that. Automatic mode seems to work well. The other thing you're going to look at is you have X-Plane or Simulator Format. Ideally, especially if you're using something like Four Flight, the ADS-B GDL90 method is going to give you way, way more flexibility with whatever type of device that you're using. Uh, what I like to do is AHARS data. You don't have to do the AHARS data if you don't want it. I'll show you one of the nice little perks about using AHARS data. A uh, calculated heading is interesting because what it does is it calculates the heading based on GPS position like a real GPS. If you don't use this, if you shut it off, for example, what it's actually going to do is it's going to use the heading that the actual game sends. Now, the reason I like that is because of the fact that this is a little more authentic with the calculated heading. If you use the game heading, you just got to make sure all your settings are done properly. Own ship, I'll use is altitudes based on MSL. Uh, this is kind of interesting. I, uh, both of these are kind of weird because all you're doing here is saying the difference between your altitude above sea level and if you remember the Earth, since it's not a perfect sphere, the actual calculated mode, which is kind of neat. Sky Demon is not going to be required for us. Hex code, this is a super fun thing to play with. You can actually define the hex code. Um, for those of you not familiar with ADSB, the hex code is basically a unique identification of the aircraft here. Um, the nice thing about this is you can dial this in. We don't have to worry about this for Sky Vector. I'm sorry, not Sky Vector for Four Flight, because it's going to know that our aircraft is our aircraft and it's not going to assume that we're going to run into ourselves. Kind of interesting. You can set how often it sends ARS data. Um, five times a second is plenty. I haven't felt the need to increase this at any point. Multiplier for defining this. Again, this is how you can play with this. I don't mess with this one too, too much here. Traffic data, I always like to send traffic data if you have it. Uh, keep in mind that uh, you'd want to watch out for this because if you make these numbers too big, it's going to cause all sorts of fun problems. That being said, I love setting this up to like 100 and just spying on traffic. It's just kind of fun. Ignore planes in the ground. I recommend leaving that one on. Now we get to the hard part. So you have a couple different options as far as how your iPad is going to receive the data again, since we're using ForeFlight here. Uh, the first thing is you can have it sent to a specific broadcast address. If you do not click this button here, this one says broadcast to all devices, what it will do is it will send it to um, a specific one. For example, if I have an application or device at this address, if I pop this, it's only gonna send it to that one. If I send it to this, it sends it to everybody on my IP. Keep in mind your Wi-Fi has to be the same thing as your connection to the same router, so you can be on the same network. Uh, coming down here, you can record some files and we can generate some some logging. Once you're happy with that, you go ahead and close that. The thing will uh, flip out on you and uh, kind of explode. Uh, don't worry about it too, too much. But like I said, the good news is, like I said, when we get over there, it's going to be pretty straightforward. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go pop up the lovely four flights. So what I'll do is I'll make this appear over in the bottom right corner of the screen here. Give it uh, just a few moments to kind of synchronize and that should work pretty well. Ah, here we are. So over here in Fort Hutt, uh, you can see that we're sitting here right now uh, chilling on Runway Tree Tree. This is Brookhaven. Oh, this is a neat little application. Now, what you probably notice is up here in the top, of course, you can't see where my finger's pointing, so you're going to have to kind of put up with me a little bit here. We have the ability to go ahead and uh, see what device is connected. If it says XMAPC V3, which is the one we're using, but no towers, that means it worked beautifully. That's awesome. If you do not get that particular option, what you can actually do is you can pop this sucker over, go to devices, and what it will do is it will display the currently connected device. One of the things I found that I had to do like 15 times to get this to work is you're going to be constantly shutting down XMAPC and turning it back on, shutting off for flight completely and turning it back on. If you run more than one application that does kind of the EFB stuff, you will not be able to do it. 
Now, if you do it on separate devices, like I have an Android device that runs, you know, iFly GPS, I can run them both at the same time. But just keep in mind that on the single device, you cannot have it have more than one device at a time. Now, once you have that set up and everything is ready to rock, watch how simple this is. I can just go down to my maps. I can go ahead and I'll set up a standard flight. I'll zoom out a little bit. Let's see if we want to go uh, directly to, we'll go to New Haven or something like that. So we'll say KHWV space KHVN. That looks pretty good. And like I said, pretty short flight. Oop, there's our little line. Magenta line of safety. It's going to give us an issue. Of course, this is our cruise altitude is too low. Fine. Uh, we actually don't want to fly IFR here. We want to fly VFR. Uh, you can see my old airplane up there, which I think is kind of neat. We've got all the different options here. We're going to do VFR. We're going to assume 2,500 feet. It'll even tell you things like how much gas you're going to use, depending on the aircraft you're actually flying. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and close it out. Hopping back over to the simulator. Oh, excuse the fact that I just spun that sucker around on my leg. You'll do that about 30 times. Let's go ahead and get airborne so I can show you just how useful this can be. So what you're looking at in the uh, bottom right corner is what we see over in floor flight. Um, oh, obviously, straight out the window, you can see exactly what we're seeing here in flight sim. I love this airplane so, so much, but man, I cannot make this thing land smoothly. I give it a little tug and we're nice and airborne. You gotta love these old school tail draggers. I mean, the things are just like, let's go. <laughs> So as you can see, uh, we're taking off there, and we're going to go ahead and take an immediate right turn, which is, you know, nice going kind of a thing like that. You're not really supposed to take that turn yet. I, you know, I feel like uh, somebody who's flying like a high-performance aircraft or something like that. So we can see we've got some smokestacks. So this is lovely Long Island. I'm going to go ahead and level myself off. Now notice, even though I do not have any fancy instrumentation inside the aircraft itself, I still have all the capabilities of ForeFlight here. And one thing I will say is you don't have to use ForeFlight. Now this is, like I said, a specific video for it. So you can kind of see how the two integrate with each other and make your own decisions. The one reason that it did end up going with ForeFlight is because it you know, works and it has this kind of logbook feature in it that I really, really like. And it ended up being something that I use quite a bit now. So I said, eh, I'll just make the plunge kind of a thing. Unfortunately, there's no way inside the flight sim that we can receive information from ForeFlight to, you know, drive like a heading autopilot or anything like that. We're kind of on our own as far as that goes. So here we go. We got ourselves all nice and level off. We're on our way. Now, one of the things I get such a kick out of with this particular uh, device, and again, you can kind of not see me holding this up, but you can see the display pretty well there, is the fact that if I want to go ahead and uh, tweak my flight a little bit, go up to my flight plan here, I can do things like procedures. Uh, let's say I want to select, uh, I'm going to do an approach in New Haven, do the ILS for two, and it will automatically open up things like my flight plan. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. And you can see I'm that little blue dot uh, that's uh, chilling kind of down there in the bottom right. But if I wanted to, I can go ahead and get all the critical information I need to know right off here. For example, I can see that if I basically went straight in from this particular direction, that would pop me uh, right in. You know, if I wanted to head over to the Calverton, which is this VOR located right here, I could basically pop on right here. One of the things I really like is the fact you can uh, pick whatever particular transition you want, and it'll go ahead and automatically update itself. And you go boop, 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 and you can see them all like this one right here. This one's from SALT, which is uh, the initial approach fix, but you can see that's basically going to send me flying straight in. All I can do now is I can check out my frequencies. I got my 109.1. .1. Pop back over to the airplane. I could go ahead and set up 109.1. .1. Go ahead and hide that for a second. 109.10. Boop. And we can come over here. We can take a look over in the corner. It looks like our direction that we need to be approaching. Let's see here. That's uh, 16 degrees. So I come down here with my OBS. And I set this to 16 degrees. Of course, I got to make sure you continue flying the plane as you're doing this. Use some a classic uh, called a uh, rudder flying here. Not stick and rudder flying, just rudder flying. There we go. So this is all set and ready to go. My frequencies are selected. I can take a look over here at four flight. I can see where my little hold's gonna be. I can see absolutely everything that I need to do to be able to safely land the aircraft. And like I said, you don't get nice tools like that. Now, one thing I would not mind changing though, I like, love this little look at the little 3D vision and everything like that. Again, super fun things to play with if I haven't had a chance to do that. Boop, let's go ahead and hide that. Cool, so right off my nose there is gonna be my destination. So popping back over to four flight here, I can see my things all ready to go. I'll hit close, we don't need that information just yet. You can see my little wavy path here as I'm trying to fly with my feet, which, you know, welcome to flying. But the other things you can do too, which I really get a kick out of, is it's gonna download real world weather. It's gonna give you a navigation log, which is gonna kind of break it down for each different individual positions. You know, you can even like profile and things like that. So we can see exactly, you know, what altitudes we're gonna be, kind of how our trip path is gonna go. It's a really, really cool tool. One other cool thing I like about this, I'm gonna hide the flight plan for a second, is you get this. And what this is, this is basically a synthetic vision built into ForeFlight. Now, the reason I get a kick out of this is if you take a look at the bottom there, this basically acts as its own little instrument panel. Obviously, this is not approved for any sort of navigation or anything like that. But if you're ever in a pinch and you just have nothing but nastiness, let me go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. Pop this button real quick. We'll go set this to uh, a few clouds. Is this going to work for me? Ooh, whoop. Oh, that is not nearly enough. Give me more. Nice. 
So now I have an IFR version of the Cessna 170. Ta-da! I can still see exactly where I'm going relatively safely here, as well as my altitude. I can see my vertical speed. Everything is, like I said, pre-calculated. It is a really, really neat feature. And again, you can see that was about how hard that was to integrate. So let's go ahead and I'll give that one a pause real quick, and then I will go ahead and review. So basically what you need is some way to connect Flight Sim over to For Flight. Um, like I said, I use XMapsy. There's a couple other options that are Windows-based if you're looking for them. Afterwards, you need to make sure you set it up so that it sends it to the correct uh, IP address. Uh, for those of you who are using iPads, again, you want to make sure you go to your Wi-Fi options and you can properties and you can see exactly what IP address or do what I do and I just broadcast it to the entire subnet. The final thing you want to do is you want to make sure that on the device that you're using your EFB, you want to check to make sure that's the only EFB running. Uh, some people run multiple EFBs. If you do that, you're going to have an issue collecting the data. But other than that, it's a pretty neat little tool that adds a nice little bit of authenticity to your flight, and it's actually pretty easy to use. Like I said, there are some other options out there, and we've talked about them in previous videos. Other than that, enjoy.